A few weeks ago, I asked you which effect from the Black Adam teaser you'd like to see a tutorial for. Let's see what we got. Lightning. I've kind of done that already. Let's see what else we got. Lightning, again, I've, I've already done a tutorial for, okay, okay, okay. We'll do the lightning. Happy. All right, so I've got my footage here. So I want to get some practical lighting to sell the effect more. So I just had an LED off to the side here and had my sister flickering the brightness. You could also get this effect by like waving your hand in front of a light. This just sells that the energy is really there and interacting with me. Now, since the lightning is gonna be behind me, I need to cut myself out. So I just threw this into Runway ML and got this. It's definitely not perfect, especially around the ear right there, but it works for what I'm trying to do. Now, if you have the studio version of DaVinci Resolve, you could just use the magic mask or obviously just use a green screen. I didn't use a green screen because I was worried that the flickering light would interfere with the key. That's why I used Runway ML. All right, so I'm gonna select both of these. New Fusion Clip and into Fusion we go. All right, so I'm gonna bring Media 1 to the viewer. So that is my background. So this one will be the green. I'm just hitting F2 on my keyboard to rename these. So I'm gonna add a Delta here and key out my green real quick. All right, so the lightning in the Black Adam trailer has a very stylized look. So let's see if we can recreate that. So let's bring in a background, bring down the alpha all the way. Now, if you know me, you know my favorite way to create lightning infusion is with a plugin, it's free, called POC Blitz. Let's start with that. All right, start. Let's turn off our exponential glow, keep things running a little bit smoother. Now under the branch length, I'm gonna link all and bring this in down all the way. Then in the energy, I'm gonna bring it up so it's thicker. Now I want the branches to be thinner, so I'm gonna go to the branch energy retention, link all, and then bring that somewhere around, um, that looks pretty good. And then maybe bring up the fall off a little bit more. I can put the start somewhere in the middle and bring the end somewhere off here. Now, if you look in the trailer, the lightning moves in an interesting way. It's not changing really every frame like this is. It has one core shape and it's slowly moving. So in order to get that effect, we can go to the phase change and just bring that up all the way. That means if you play through it, the lightning won't move at all. That gives us the look we're going for. Now, one thing to note with this is that if you try to move the controls any, it's not gonna update. Now we have it staying still for the whole thing, but we only need it to be on for a couple of frames. So what I'm gonna do is add a brightness contrast node. Now if I bring down the gain on this, you'll see it's making it darker, which isn't what we want. But if we click on the alpha, then it basically is a transparency slider. So let's bring that down, set a keyframe, go forward one frame, bring that back to normal, then go maybe five frames, keyframe, back down. So now it's off pops up and then disappears. Now that's one, but we need a lot more of these. What I'm gonna do is copy and paste them over here and then just merge that back on top of each other. Bring the merge to the viewer. Now change the apply mode to screen. Now I want to be going in another direction. So I'm gonna bring our things to a different place. And then again, bring the face change down and back up so that it updates. Now I want these to be on at a different time from each other. So I'm gonna select this brightness contrast Go into the keyframes. Make sure show only selected tools is on. I'm gonna click this to make it fill the screen. Drop this down. Now I can select all these and move them anywhere I want. I'm just gonna have it be a few frames after the first one. So now if we watch this, we have one and then another. So you wanna keep duplicating these, adding as many lightnings as you need. It got really tedious and by the end, you will have a ton of nodes. If this sounds a bit intimidating, don't worry about it. I rendered it out for you. I'll have a link in the description where you can download this footage. Now you can see it doesn't last the whole thing because it got really tedious. I did not go all the way, but because it's lightning, I'm just gonna loop it. Because it's so chaotic and erratic, you don't really notice the loop point. But in the original shot, there was a lot more lightning than this. So an easy way to get more more detail out of this is copy it and then paste it. So now I can merge this over the original and change the apply mode to screen. Nothing really should have happened. That's because these are both the exact same footage. But if we had a time speed node, we can set a delay. I'm gonna say maybe 10 frames. Now this footage is playing 10 frames behind this one. And it adds more lightning and you don't notice that it's the same footage over again. We can make it even more different by changing the speed. I'm gonna change it to 0.7. Now one thing you'll notice is that we have this ghosting in and out. We can fix this by changing the interpolation mode to nearest. Now it looks right and we have a lot more lightning. 
Now let's give it that movement from the trailer. I'm gonna add a displace node and bring down a fast noise and plug that into it. Open the dual viewer and bring the fast noise into that. So all I'm gonna do is change the fast noise to discontinuous, bring up the seed rate a little bit, and play with the contrast. Now in the displace, I can change the type to X and Y, bring down the X offset and the Y offset, and bring up the refraction just a little bit, somewhere around uh, 0.02 looks good. Now it has that slow winding movement from the trailer. Now real quick, before the displace, we can add a blur just to soften up those edges a little bit. Now let's add another displace. Bring another fast noise into that. Now this fast noise, we're gonna bring up the scale all the way, maybe even a little bit more. Let's bring it to 30 and bring up the detail all the way and maybe bring up the seed rate a little bit. Now the displace, we can do the same thing, bring down the offset, and then bring up the refraction just a little bit till it starts breaking it up and making it look less artificial. All right, so next, I'm gonna add a brightness contrast node, and I'm gonna bring the delta keyer into that. Then I'm gonna multiply by mask and apply mask inverted. So now my shape is cut out of the lightning. Why are we doing this? Well, you'll see in a little bit. Now I'm gonna add an X glow. This is my favorite glow plugin. You can get it for free on Reactor, but a soft glow would work just fine. I'm gonna bring it to a nice blue color, then add intensity. This is another plugin. You could use the color corrector for a lot of it, but I like the controls to intensity gives. So I'm gonna bring up the gamma and play with the saturation. Now I'm going to merge this over our footage and then change the apply mode to screen. So because we cut ourselves out from this image, it's adding the glow on top of my silhouette. So the glow and light bleeds over into me. So you can see if I just merge the footage straight over this, it does not look realistic at all. My blacks don't match and the glow does not fit at all. You'd have to do big complicated light wraps to get it to work. But with this trick, the glow automatically looks really realistic. Now the lightning on the chest is really similar to the lightning from Thor Ragnarok, and Filmcore Digital already did a really good tutorial on that effect, which you can check out here. And if you're itching to check out more energy effects, then check out this video where I show you how to make the Ghostbusters Proton Stream in the free version of Adventure Resolve.